different kind of topics. The first one is going to be a talk by uh, Xavier, who is going to show you how OCaml Java is going to run on the JVM. Thanks for the introduction. Um, so I will briefly present the project, but I will uh, gladly accept uh, interruptions and questions. I have uh, quite a lot of backup slides for specific issues, so I don't hesitate to ask for any questions. So uh, first, uh, as the uh, name suggests, Okay, Java is basically a compiler for the development program, and uh, that generates uh, Java bytecode. Uh, most pre precisely, uh, the objective are to uh, generate a uh, clean bytecode. Uh, it means uh, no uh, network interface uh, whatsoever, and also to avoid uh, costly things uh, such as uh, bad actions and so on. Uh, another very important goal is the ability to uh, manipulate uh, Java entities from OCaml sources. Uh, that means, of course, uh, creating instances and calling the method on such instances. Uh, it would be nice to get uh, design performance out of uh, this compiler. And um, one uh, key selling point uh, when comparing uh, this compiler to uh, the original one uh, is uh, uh, the support for uh, multi core programming. Uh, because the original implementation of OCaml is based on the uh, runtime block. So, uh, by targeting uh, the Java virtual machine, you can actually have uh, support for multiple programming. So, first, I must say that it's uh, um, a pleasure to work with uh, the JVM as a target uh, because of uh, comprehensive and up to date documentation. And uh, also, recent developments. Uh, are very exciting. So, for example, method handles uh, that are basically uh, the uh, Java equivalent of um, function pointers. Yes. Is comprehensive and up to date documentation unusual for your target platforms in general? Um, well, I would say it's uh, easier to work with the JVM as uh, targets than with uh, uh, a <coughs> SN JVM. So details are somewhere, somewhere to be done in the source file. So because that's in the state of flux? Yes, probably. Yes. But there are still some problems. Um, for example, it's not very easy from the documentation to um, anticipate uh, the impact of uh, some decision on your uh, current uh, generator. So, for example, it's not uh, easy to uh, say beforehand uh, whether it is best uh, for the budget to have a single exit point or multiple exit points for the method. And uh, another problem uh, is that um, sometimes um, very uh, minor changes to your bytecode have actually uh, a great impact on performance. Um, so at some point, um, the compiler uh, generates for each method a control flow graph, and of course it has to be uh, mapped to a simple uh, instruction list. And there are uh, several uh, possibilities. And they are not equivalent uh, performance-wise, performance and it's difficult to understand the differences uh, unless you look at uh, the JIT output, the assembler code that is actually uh, executed. Uh, basically, most of my problems were uh, related to um, branch prediction and uh, inverting uh, condition um, can have a major impact in that one. Have you found different performance characteristics with different JVMs? Uh, yeah. To be honest, most of my work is done on uh, macOS. Uh, I also test on uh, Linux. I with OpenJDK? Uh, yes. yes. But I'm not sure the JIT is different from the one. No. Um, so, no, basically, I have always used 
of a JIT that targets uh, interprocessors. Um, and the last uh, problem uh, is that um, the safety of uh, the machine uh, impacts uh, performance. I will um, detail this uh, on a concrete example. Um, OCaml performs site uh, erasure. Uh, this means that uh, all uh, three modules here have the very same uh, representation at uh, runtime. So the first one is a record with two fields, the second one a tuple with two components, and the last one an array with two elements. These three values have the very same uh, representation at uh, runtime, which is a basic block with two sub values. So it would be natural to uh, encode that uh, with a Java array. But the problem is that uh, then you will pay uh, a bone check for all cases while you are only interested in bone checks in the last one. So uh, the solution is not uh, very clean, but it's very efficient. Uh, it's to uh, actually generate a bunch of classes uh, that are uh, specialized uh, to handle uh, one value, two values, three values, and so on, uh, through fields. And then uh, you have no bound check at one time. Uh, actually, um, doing that gives uh, quite uh, an important uh, boost, uh, roughly uh, 20 to 25 percent of the typical gamma code. Um, so, among other uh, challenges are uh, the fact that uh, exceptions, for example, have uh, slightly different semantics in the two uh, languages. And also the fact that uh, some core libraries of OCaml uh, actually manipulate uh, closures at certain time to perform computations. And this uh, good constraints on how you can uh, represent uh, values at runtime. time. The good news is um, this compiler has been used uh, quite extensively for two years now uh, <coughs> in the context of uh, um, a startup company uh, which is developing um, a very basic website. Uh, that is fed with a lot of open data uh, coming from um, different uh, formats ranging from uh, CSV to uh, Excel and so on. So, uh, in two key points, uh, it was of course very nice uh, to uh, enjoy the type safety of uh, Java. Um, and it was uh, also uh, more than convenient to be able to access uh, third-party libraries uh, because it's, uh, it is not uh, really possible today to, uh, to build a professional website uh, without uh, resorting to a lot of uh, external uh, elements. And all of these elements are uh, accessible uh, in Java, but uh, none of them is accessible from plain document. So the blending of OCaml and uh, Java is actually uh, very useful in this context. Uh, to be fair, uh, it works very well, very well in this uh, context, uh, also because uh, performance is not a key issue. Uh, because uh, in the context of a, of a website, you are basically uh, well, Runtime is basically dominated by uh, input and output. And we are mostly interested in uh, horizontal scaling. So uh, even if your compiler is not uh, delivering uh, very good uh, performance, it's not a major problem. Um, during the development, however, uh, we noticed uh, <coughs> some uh, shortcomings. 
first one is that uh, the way you interact with Java from OCaml is a bit uh, verbose. I will show an, uh, an example on the very next slide, I think. And uh, the other problem is that um, currently uh, the compiler has no support for Java generics. So, uh, for example, uh, to, uh, to manipulate uh, Java element from uh, OCaml, you uh, currently have to use a bunch of uh, dedicated functions, so, such as uh, make or call, and give a descriptor. So the nice thing is that uh, everything is checked at the right time. So you keep uh, the strong typing of the camera. And in the same time, uh, the uh, bytecode that is uh, generated for such code is uh, just the same as would be generated by the Java compiler itself. So you have some sort of the best of password. Um, as, uh, as you can see, it's uh, pretty variable. So, uh, as I said, you can uh, construct instances with this function, call uh, methods uh, with this one, and um, the first two statements are used to uh, invert a given class in uh, the scope and open a package. Are they strings there? Uh, this one? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But Really? Yes, there is. But they are uh, checked out uh, compile time and erased. Right. Uh, if you are uh, familiar. And if you make a mistake, what kind of error do you get back? Uh, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, this uh, function uh, basically creates an object. If you compile it, you will get this output. So uh, you pass a unit value and you get an object. If I write it in French, <laughs> It will just say that object that is it. Um, so you, yeah, well, you can see. Can you take the string from somewhere else? Can you, can you construct the string with like contemplation beforehand? And then no. the it has to be a uh, by time uh, literal. Um, so if you want to uh, get the of an object, you do something like it's, it's more like a delimiter that mm -hmm. uh, moves you from uh, OCaml into uh, Java context to Java. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, um, so you know it is a little bit more interesting be um, because you have uh, some variant of this one. Um, <coughs> there is no weight. Yes, because it takes a room. But uh, as you are in Java, you also want to have some kind of type inference, very limited. So, for example, you can ask the compiler to uh, guess type and <coughs> underscore is for uh, one type. 
and for public uh, signature you can use uh, minus. So this should just <coughs> fail <coughs> fully uh, because um, there is an ambiguity. You cannot decide uh, which method you are referring to. So um, it's actually a string, uh, it's actually a hack, but uh, everything is checked at compile time, so, so you are still safe. Um, um, so uh, to reduce uh, verbosity, uh, the idea is now to use uh, recent uh, developments uh, inside your camel community. Um, so, uh, for example, to um, import uh, respectively a class and a package in your uh, scope, you will use uh, this, these uh, statements in the next version. And uh, also, uh, just as you said, um, we introduce a compile time uh, magical operator, which takes the string always and just lifts the string into a Nukaman function. So uh, this one is uh, just the same as the previous one. But uh, as you can see, you do not have to say that you want to make uh, an instance or that you want to uh, call a method. Uh, it's actually inferred by the shape of the string. Because the uh, constructor has a different uh, shape than a uh, method call. Here, you have no method name. So, this uh, magical uh, combined time operator just uh, lift some bits of Java into your camera. <coughs> so you resolve that ambiguity by having the inforce state because I mean the difference between a static message and the constructor is not too clear. Um, you know uh, what I was saying is that uh, here after the last name you have boundaries. Uh, and when you call a method, you have the method name. So it can tell about that this is the constructor and this is the method name. So you don't allow static imports? No. Um, so I don't know what is um, most interesting. Should I present a complete example? Or uh, give an idea of how types are mixed uh, between two languages. Well, I think it's funnier to uh, look at uh, type encoding. Uh, so um, the idea is that um, you will just have a very thin layer that will convert uh, Java types into plain Pokemon types. So uh, if you uh, write uh, this function, what you get uh, from the compiler is that this function uh, takes a string and uh, gives you back um, five instances. So this is what you uh, read. But uh, internally, things are uh, represented uh, this way. So um, you can see here a list of uh, elements that are uh, very similar to um, uh, values from an uh, element. Okay. And uh, the idea is that this will act as a photon type and you actually say that the string is a Java instance that inherits from string object comparable, sizable and sequence. 
So uh, it's a very simple mapping from uh, any um, Java class. You can build such a type. Uh, it works uh, because in OCaml, uh, unlike uh, some uh, ML dialects, uh, you have some subtyping. So this says that you will accept here a type which has at least these elements. Uh, it's actually very important because uh, if you do not have this uh, subtyping, uh, you are uh, not able to handle uh, Java subtyping. So uh, in some sense, we are just we have just uh, uncoded uh, the type of Java classes into a plain OCaml type. Um, are you expecting this tool to be used by OCaml programmers who want to do Java or Java programmers who want to do OCaml? Um, the first one, uh, because for the second, for the second category, uh, I think uh, Scala is more mm -hmm. um, Actually, I think uh, the, the, the best target um, yes, is an OCaml programmer that do not want to give, an, give up on type uh, safety, but has to work with a lot of uh, external libraries. So uh, it was uh, our case uh, because we are dealing with a lot of open data and then we have to read uh, Excel files, uh, parse, JSON, uh, values and so on. And uh, all of this uh, is available in Java but not in OCaml. So you do not want to reinvent the tool, but you also uh, do not want to give up on type safety. And uh, how, how tightly coupled is the thing for JVM? I mean, can you imagine writing uh, another backend to target a different virtual machine? Oh, sorry? Um, like the common language runtime, for instance, can you imagine, you know, OCaml.net or something like that? Um, I'm not sure. Or is it ja very Java specific? Oh, okay. Um, well, I see the only very specific part is this encoding. Uh, actually it works uh, very well for Java, it works uh, less well for other languages. I've tried to um, uh, embed uh, TypeScript mm -hmm. using the, the same idea, but it's uh, uh, more difficult. Uh, and the nice thing about uh, the Java type system is that it's very simple and it's very minimal. Uh, as soon as your type system uh, is, at least in part, uh, structural, uh, gets pretty easy. So, one last question. Is the, uh, so, the integration of Java as a literal <coughs> is done through a Java embedding Java compiler is a library or do you do uh, Actually, there is an, an underlying uh, <coughs> library that um, deals with uh, class files. So, uh, the, uh, this library is a local one that passes a class file and do what uh, reflection mm -hmm. could, could do. So, uh, when I, uh, when I uh, used uh, this compiler here, uh, there, were, there was actually uh, no virtual machine involved. Uh, it's uh, an OCaml binary, not one. So, thank you very much for the talk.